blade and quill. Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I am going to show you how to manipulate a vector text and create some playful designs. Then, at the end of this video, I will show you how to curve a text using our favorite plugin, Gimmick. Let's get started. Create a new vector layer. Grab the text tool. With the left mouse button, drag the cursor on the canvas. The size of the box does not matter, just uh, let go. Type your text. Change the size of font to uh, 16. To preview your changes, uh, click Save. 16 is uh, too small, uh, let me try 18. In the Font Family window, choose a Stencil and click Save to preview. For my non-American viewers, please be aware that this Stencil font is typically used in US military-themed displays. So I would advise you to do a little research before using it for your logos or any of your other commercial creations. As for me, I chose it because of its unique design. If you look closely, you will notice that the letters are made of loose shapes. This fact alone made it a perfect candidate for this tutorial. Alright, that said and out of the way, let's continue. Using the kerning button, increase the spacing between the letters. Try 150. Save to preview. Finally, change the color of your text from black to blue or choose any other colors that you want. We are done. Save and close. In the Tool Options Docker, activate the Scale Styles action. Just check the box right next to it. Using any of the guide box nodes, stretch your text or shrink it. To proportionally increase or decrease the size of your text, first close this little chain link located right here. Here again, using any of the guide box nodes, drag them onto the canvas until you are pleased with the new size. Our Select Shapes tool is still active. The only thing that we need to do here is click anywhere on the text to make the guide box appear again. Now right click. A window with a menu of various actions is going to appear. Now please pay attention. If you have multiple objects selected, you should be able to perform what is called logical operations on them. However, as you can see here, the option is nowhere to be found. There is a trick, however, to bring the options back to the menu. Let me show you how. Grab your Edit Shapes tool. Using the right mouse button, click on the top of any of your letters. A little menu window appears. It says to path. Using the left mouse button, click on the window to activate the functionality. As you can see, each letter of the text is now surrounded by paths and nodes. At this point, if you wanted, you could move the nodes around and create your own font. 
Remember, to remove a node, you need to first click on it to activate it and then click delete on your keyboard. To add a node, click on the path where you want the new node to be added and then double click. The new node has been added. Let me undo all of this and get back to where we began. Our purpose here is not to modify the letters to create a brand new font. What we want to do here is isolate each letter. By using the Edit Shapes tool earlier, we activated paths and nodes around all the letters. Somehow, we've made Krita understand that we want to work on the letters separately, if that makes any sense. So the only things left to do is grab the Select Shapes tool again to reactivate our guide box. Right click on it to get back to the menu box. And voila! The logical operations action is back in the menu. To isolate the letters, select the logical operation and choose split. Dotted lines are now surrounding each single shapes that make up a letter. Click anywhere on the canvas to get out of the guide box. Now look what we've done. We can move freely every single shape of the text. As you can see here, this letter is made of four parts. I am going to group them all together to create one single structure. With the left mouse button, click anywhere on the canvas and then drag your cursor to select the entire letter. Right click inside the guide box and choose group. Now all the four shapes are glued together. Do the same thing for every letter, except the letter I, since this one is a single shape by itself. Now that all the letters have been grouped, you can change their size, rotate, or elongate them. You can also change their color. Please be aware that you cannot change the color of shapes that have been grouped. If I click on the letter I, the only letter that didn't need to be grouped, I can change its color by choosing a new U in the color wheel. Or using the fill tab in the tool options docker. However, if I click on this grouped shape and try to change its color, nothing happens. To change the color of this shape, we need first to ungroup the shape. Right click and choose ungroup. Now leave the guide box active, this is very important. Change the color. When done, right click again and regroup your shape. And you are done. Do the same for all remaining grouped letters. Krita does not offer the ability to type a text on a path like a Photoshop or Illustrator do. In Krita, we are going to have to be a little more creative. Create a new vector layer and grab the ellipse tool. In the Tool Options Docker, select Not Field and Brush. Now create your circle. Click on the layer where your vector letters are located to make it active. 
Now the only thing left to do is use the Select Shapes tool to move and place the letters around the shape. Depending on your project, uh, be as precise as you can be or just don't be precise uh, at all if you want and uh, have some fun. I am going to turn over two vector layers we worked on and I am going to create a new vector layer right below the ellipse layer. Now let me quickly create a new text and for the demonstration I'll type my first name. First things first, uh, if you try to use a gimmick on a vector layer, it won't work. As you can see here, the option in the drop down menu is uh, grayed out. So how are we going to be able to use a plugin? Well, first we are going to need to convert our vector layer into a paint layer. Let me show you how. Right click on your vector layer, go to convert and choose to paint layer. Go back to the filters tab and as you can see now the plugin is available for us to use. Let's click on it to activate the plugin. For this exercise we are going to use the deformation option. Open it. In the drop down menu scroll down until you see sphere. When you are done, click OK. Here is our newly curved text. For some reasons, the original text remains on the canvas. We need to get rid of it. Select the text using the rectangular selection tool. Now click on the delete button on your keyboard. Hit Ctrl Shift plus A to undo the selection. Using the moving tool, place your text at the center of the canvas. We are going to turn back on the ellipse layer. Click on it to make it active. Now use the Select Shapes tool and transform the ellipse the way you want it to fit under your text. Obviously, this is not the best way to do things. Uh, feel free to experiment and see what works best for you. And we are done for today and with this series of tutorials on vectors. I hope I succeeded in answering most of your questions. Make sure to watch the other videos if you missed them. I added the link to the playlist in the description box. I will see you in the next tutorial. Until then, have fun creating art. Au revoir et à bientôt.